G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today in our Falcon History series we look at the Falcon ED. The ED Falcon was produced from August 1993 to August 1994. There were over 280 changes made to the ED Falcon compared to the EB, although from a styling point of view the main change was the Overloid grill. The model range consisted of the Falcon GLI sedan and wagon, and these were available with the 4 litre 6 or the 5 litre V8. Also available and returning was the Falcon Futura sedan and wagon, the Falcon XR6 sedan, and now an XR6 wagon, the Falcon XR8 the Fairmont sedan and wagon, and the Fairmont gear sedan. As I mentioned, the standard engine was the 4-litre single overhead cam straight 6-cylinder engine with 148 kilowatts of power, which equates to 198 horsepower, or a 5-litre Windsor fuel-injected V8 with 165 kilowatts or 221 horsepower. The GLI had the standard 14-inch steel wheels with uh, hubcaps. They also featured uh, power steering as standard, adjustable steering column, remote boot release, the smart lock uh, remote keyless entry system with the immobilizer, AM, FM, radio cassette, and uh, the plastic fuel tank, which had been debuted back in the uh, XD days. The Futura nameplate was also brought back and that replaced the Falcon S. And the features of the Futura over the GLI included body colored door handles and mirrors, the availability of black pearl paintwork, demand wash wipe on the windscreen wipers, ABS brakes, cruise control, full instrumentation pack, which uh, featured four ancillary gauges uh, plus a tachometer with voltmeter and all pressure gauge, digital clock, lamps for ignition lock and map reading lights, eight speaker Alpine sound system, carpeted door mat pockets on the front doors only, and full cloth trim. Futura models also shared the same engine and transmission options as the GLI, with the exception of there being no manual uh, transmission available and no V8 option on the wagon, which seems odd to me because a wagon's more likely to want a V8 than a sedan. Alongside these models were also the XG Falcon Ute, uh, including the Long Reach, uh, which were really the Utes based on the old XF or XD platform, if you like. And uh, also there was an XR version of the, uh, the utility as well. And there was also a panel van model available. There were a range of uh, options uh, available Sports suspension were available on the Falcon GLI sedan, the Futura sedan, and also uh, the Fairmont sedan and the Fairmont Gear sedan. Uh, there was a super sport suspension available on the Falcon XR6 and the XR8. You could also order a uh, Momo sport steering wheel, uh, sunroof, 16 inch wheels and tires available on uh, the sedans uh, only and a uh, body styling kit uh, to update the appearance of the vehicle, give it a bit more of a sporty look, uh, LPG and also a 2300 kilogram towing package. The XR models featured a really cool uh, quad round headlight uh, styling treatment and this became a characteristic for XR Falcons uh, really right through for many, many years after that debut. Uh, of really exciting news was the launch of the ED XR8 Sprint. So after the uh, debut of the 200 kilowatt 25th anniversary EB GT in 1993, Ford decided to use the same engine, uh, albeit detuned slightly to 195 kilowatts, maybe that was the real output of the GT as well, uh, for a limited run XR8. And the standard XR8 generated 165 kilowatts of power uh, but actually was outperformed by the, the lighter and more nimbler XR6. 
but the Sprint uh, you know, clawed that back by offering the 195 kilowatts. And it was also 70 uh, kilograms lighter than the EB GT, weighing in at uh, 1,579 kilograms. And as a result, the Sprint was able to accelerate from zero to 100 kilometres an hour, 60 miles per hour, in 7.3 seconds, on the way to its terminal velocity of 230 kilometres per hour. Other features of the uh, ED Sprint included the Momo four-spoke uh, steering wheel, 16-inch ROH alloy wheels, uh, suspension revisions, including a five millimetre lower springs all round, new anti-roll bars for better high-speed stability. And the car very much compared uh, favourably to the HSV VR club sport of the day, which did suffer from uh, you know, axle tramp. 300 ED XR8 sprints were made, uh, and look, they certainly are a collectible vehicle these days and increasing in their desirability as a collectible, but it has taken some time to get there. One thing about the uh, ED Falcon that I really like was the steering wheel. I thought that was a really uh, a good design, a nice uh, interior. You know, the cockpit of the uh, vehicle was really good and, and very neat and tidy. And, uh, you know, the cloth trim, the car was really becoming a very well-equipped family car or fleet car. You know, the fold-down rear seats, that was also good from a practicality perspective. And they really were sorting this. I mean, this was the last iteration of, I suppose, this version before it came in for a major e-style for the uh, EF model. Another uh, limited edition, although more of a value pack, I guess, was the, uh, the Falcon Classic. Uh, and that featured, you know, alloy wheels and a, and a number of other, I guess, uh, normal options uh, fitted as standard. It was a value pack uh, designed to go up against, you know, the Holden Commodore, but also the Magna and a few of the other, uh, I guess, competitors in the marketplace just offering, uh, I guess, not only fleet buyers, because these packs were more really uh, designed to appeal to the private buyer. So I guess it was something that you know, Ford did and Holden did with their Vacationer, for example, uh, value packs to drive more retail uh, private sales uh, as part of the mix. Total production of the ED Falcon was 72,571 units. So that's the history on the ED Falcon. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please give the episode a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out an episode. Uh, check out the Falcon playlist as well. That's got all the episodes I've done so far, from XK right up to the current episode, which is ED. And um, also, I guess, you know, keep an eye out for more uh, episodes on Australian cars. I will be doing Holdens and Chryslers and a whole other raft of vehicles, Australian and American and from, you know, all over the world. So anyway, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And also be keen to hear from you, uh, which one did you like the best, the EA, the EB or the ED? Uh, I like the EB, I think, because of the V8 in particular, but the ED is pretty cool with the Sprint. So anyway, I'd be keen to hear your comments. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Why not choose the new film? The new Falcon Classic comes complete with $3,000 worth of extras at no extra cost. And that includes air conditioning.